Okay, so I don't like doing videos that aren't planned. I like to know what I'm going to say, but we need to like verbally hash this out. So bear with me if you want to. <laughs> um, I've been creating a new model of consciousness and it kind of explains my whole life. And I'm excited to explore this because nothing has ever been ex able to <laughs> explain my whole life. And the more I can understand myself, the more power I have in healing and transforming the parts of myself that are impairing my ability to function and experience happiness in life. So my model of consciousness basically states that there's different layers to our consciousness and the automated messages start from the bottom and work their way up to the top. And we can reclaim our power by creating messages from the top and working our way to send those messages down through the bottom. And so the top of our consciousness is our conscious awareness. I'm going to write on a paper and I'll show you guys. So the top little bit of our consciousness. So I hate how vibrations make me dissociate. Sorry, guys. see straight anymore. <sighs> love how my vision goes when there's vibrations outside. <laughs> there's got to be more to this disorder than just mental stuff. There's no way that I can be this smart and this crazy. <laughs> That's why I'm studying the neurobiology of DID. I have to know the science of it because there's no way I can be this nuts. So <laughs> without there being an explanation. <laughs> A physical neurobiological explanation. So our, our, our conscious awareness is 5% of our consciousness. After that, we have our situational self. Okay. Our situational self is, and all of this is stuff I've been doing in self-hypnosis and meditation. So verbalizing it is new and this is scary and it's challenging and it's difficult and it's uncomfortable and it's like nerve wracking, but I need to try it. So thank you for being with me as I try it. Um, situational self is the part of us that's worried about being an adult within society. Situational self is the part of us that grows as we develop based on um, the situational needs of our environment. So situational needs of environment is one. Um, this part of us grows as we consciously observe the world and this is where um, defensive protector parts of our consciousness live okay and then the next piece of us is mirage me and that is where our inner child lives and that's the, let's see, situational self is the image we intentionally project into reality. How, it's how, <sighs> so anxiety provoking, I don't even expressing myself, voicing my thoughts, coming up with ideas. It is also very nerve wracking. Like all the different parts of me are like, what if this, what if that? Like we need to limit, we need to stay small. We can't heal by staying what we already are if we're hurting. We have to grow and grow into a capacity to heal ourselves if we're gonna, if we're gonna, if we're gonna like truly heal. Like not just cover up the symptoms, but I'm talking truly heal transform the way we experience life from the inside out healing so situational self take this off now, is how we want others to see us or maybe not even that how it's how others perceive us that's more accurate. It's how others perceive us, okay? And then, got my little notes. Oh, good, they're not backwards. I always forget this is the camera that does things backwards. 
Um, so we got our conscious aware. Oh yeah, it's backwards when I move my finger. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, technology and dissociation don't mix. <laughs> so the conscious awareness, little teeny tiny part, that's what we're aware of at any given moment. And that's only 5% of our consciousness. What we're aware of at any given moment. Okay. And then situational self um, pays attention to external uh, situational needs of environment. And then after that, within our consciousness, our next layer is Mirage Me. And that's where our inner child lives. Um, what not we'll come back to that one the next one is subconscious neuro pathways and then the last one one after that is the unconscious body mind so this is our consciousness and when we can understand each of these layers we can reclaim power over it and really transform our life experience and so on an automatic level, messages are coming from the bottom and moving their way up. So what kind of messages does each layer create? Let's look at that next. Mm. Yeah. So exploring consciousness. We have our conscious awareness at the top. It's 5% of our consciousness. It's what we're aware of at any given moment. The next layer of consciousness, according to my new model that I'm creating um, as part of Healing Journey Homeschool, is situational self who pays attention to external situational needs of environment grows as we consciously observe the world uh, where defensive protector parts live um, it's the image we intentionally project into reality and how others perceive us and then the next layer is mirage me and that's where the inner child lives and those are the specific parts of our consciousness that we think of as like consciousness. And then like, like a voice contributing to our conscious awareness, consciousness, parts of us that have their own like desires and, and priorities and things like that. And then the next layer is subconscious neural pathways, which is our neurobiological brain. And so the subconscious neural pathways are built during early childhood development, and it's the neurobiological brain that develops according to neurobiological development, which is a whole other topic, and we totally dive into that in Healing Journey Homeschool, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Um, and then the last layer of our consciousness is our unconscious body-mind, which are our unconscious processes of consciousness, like breathing and things like that. And our physical body. And so each of these has an aspect that they contribute to our experience of consciousness. And so for example, if our body is hurting, all right, so let's start here. Messages start from the bottom and go to the top, right? So if our body is hurting, then that pain goes up here and might trigger or activate, those words are interchangeable, subconscious neural pathways related to pain and then those messages travel up to mirage me and our inner child is saying i'm in pain therefore i can't be a child i can't enjoy the world i can't this and that i'm just i'm in pain and then situational self hears this message and says oh my god the only priority is pain relief our body is in pain it's activating all these subconscious neural pathways that are telling us all the fears and worries that pain has. It's limiting this part of our consciousness's ability to enjoy life and be present. So now we're up here in situational self and situational self says, I can't do anything until this pain is taken care of. And then we get to our conscious awareness and we are experiencing conscious pain and the conscious call to action to do something about that pain. So that's one example. Another example, using something less painful <laughs> than pain, um, let's say there is pain relief. Well, we'll, we'll do that just for contrast. Um, pain relief. So there was pain. Now there's pain relief. 
so the unconscious body mind notices a reduction in pain. That activates subconscious neuropathways that remind us of all the beauty that comes from when pain is reduced. Like there's this intensity and then there's this relief. There's this darkness and then there's this light. There's this despair and then there's this joy. Um, And so it activates all these subconscious neuropathways, which could be memories and feelings and beliefs and all sorts of things that support this experience of pain relief. And then those messages continue going upward in the conscious. Pookie bear, young man, come here. Stop it. Um, Go up into the the consciousness. And the next part is Mirage Me. And then Mirage Me says, oh, my main priority is just being present and experiencing joy and having a fresh perspective. And now that we were in pain and now we're not in in pain or in as much pain, we get to like feel hope and joy and playfulness. And we can look at our situation from a new perspective because now it's not just pain. It's also these other things and they're good things. And the contrast helps me feel like I can embrace the moment. And then situational self is receiving all of these messages and therefore has a greater ability to engage. And so because there's pain relief and presence and positive memories being drawn and ability to do all these things, situational self says, okay, I can engage. I can engage. I can stay calm. I can converse calmly. Pookie bear, you're driving me nuts. Huh? Um, and then our conscious awareness experience is like a positive experience because we're able to engage. We're able to appreciate the pain relief that we're experiencing. We're able to be in tune with our body. We're able to be present with the memories and feelings that are coming up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so this model explains a lot of different things and makes sense of stuff. And it also carries into living with a dissociative identity and all the different things I experience with my parts of consciousness and my dissociation. So I hope to explore that more as we continue. This video is getting a little long, so I will end it for now. But these are some of the exciting concepts we're diving into in Healing Journey Homeschool. And I really hope to um, evolve and clarify my concept because when I use this in self-hypnosis and meditation, it always gives me the tools I need. Like it's, it's, it's in my experience thus far, it's a very foolproof model for understanding myself, understanding the world around me and knowing how to interact with the two, knowing how to interact with myself in a healing manner and knowing how to interact with the world around me in a productive way. And when I can make sense of what's going on inside of me and the people around me, when I'm living with chronic dissociation and multiple identities living inside of my consciousness, It really, really provides a lot more personal power as I try to embrace this everyday healing journey. So I'm excited to explore this more. And thank you so much for joining the Kristen Chronicles healing journey. I feel very grateful to get to share this journey in this way and, you know, share ideas and share experiences and just grow together. And even if we are alone in our journey here in person alone, you know, like there's, we're not doing this this study stuff in groups or anything like this is all on our own we don't have a therapist of any kind anything like that our chiropractor is absolutely incredible but otherwise everything we're doing is on our own um through our own research our own knowledge our own work and so to get to share ideas and experiences in our evolving healing journey in this way is just a huge blessing so thank you for being here and for being a part of the Kristen chronicles healing journey and i hope you have a beautiful and blessed rest of your day